So a small introduction to our special guest today, uh, Dr. Francis Okoye. I've known him since, I think maybe 2017, or uh, he was the one who even made the first contact. And he's a very special person because he has this huge appetite for learning and very humble in personality that, you know, he came all the way, he was in Uniben then, uh, and right now he works in Lagos Business School, then he works in Uniben. And so he's someone who has had experience, not just in the academia, that's what I like about him. He's not the usual kind of person that you come across in the academia. He has his interest cost across both industry and academics. Even when he was in Uniben, he was working, consulting, while still working with the university. And then I don't know too much about what he does now with the LBS. Maybe they let him uh, do some things on on, on the private space, but I know LBS always has this approach of always merging the industry with the academia. So definitely, again, you're going to gain a lot from his wealth of experience. And uh, right, uh, I want to go and grab other people, but let me hand over to him so that at least, you know, he would begin his session while I go grab the other people. So please, a warm welcome to Dr. Francis Okoye. Thank you for uh, accepting to do today's session. So over to you, sir. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, please, my screen showing. Yes, it is. Yes. All right. Um, so basically, uh, what we are going to be doing today is statistical analysis with Excel. Okay. So I don't know the assumption we are going to make, whether we are beginners, uh, intermediate, or advanced. Okay. But just to make sure that everybody's on the same page, well, let's assume we are all beginners, okay? Okay. So basically, statistical analysis with Excel. So I'm sure most time we have done one form of analysis or another, using either of the tools, okay? But recently, we see the buzzwords, okay? Data analysis, analytics, data science. We're not going to bother ourselves with these concepts, okay? Just you know at the end of the day, all we are trying to do is an analysis. But for every organization, or depending on how you want to use it, all we are trying to understand about the data is what's the data telling you, okay? And what are you asking? So what's happening in my business, if it's an organization, okay? Why is it happening, okay? What is likely to happen, okay? And what do I need to do to make it happen? So if you understand this from this, this is what they refer to as the data analytics. So they call it descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics, okay? So in all these analytic tools that we do, everything is still in Excel, okay? We still have all these tools in Excel. So for example, in your descriptive analytics, so if you look at your data analytics tool pack, so we have what they call your descriptive descriptive statistics okay which is in your data analysis tool pack okay so we have that and that's an adding which you have to bring into excel if it's, if it's not there so your diagnostic analytics so basically you are trying to understand why it happens so this is when you start digging deep into the data okay so there's one tool we already have there okay which is our pivot table Okay, to understand why it happens. So we start doing the filtering and doing all sort of analysis, okay? Then we also have what like what's likely going to happen, okay? So we are trying to make some predictions, okay? So we're talking about predictive analytics, okay? And in this place where we deal with the algorithms, okay, in analysis. And basically what you are looking at, you have your regression analysis, you have your regression analysis, you have your logistic regression. So the difference, so your logistic regression. Okay. Again, yes, what so prescriptive analytics looking at what do I do to make it happen? So what should I do to make it happen? Okay. So we also have different tools. So for example, for those the engineers, you have your optimization problem, so your linear programming. Okay. So in Excel, you also have your Excel solver. Okay, you also have your Excel solver. 
And again, one way to measure uncertainty, okay, so the challenge is that when you take decisions, there's always that chance of uncertainty, okay? So how do you measure those uncertainty? We're now talking about multicolor simulation. Simulation. So all this we also have in Excel, okay? But more specifically that there are some tasks that we want to achieve, okay? But what do we need to do to get it? So sometimes we may have our what if analysis where we see our goal seek, okay? We have our data table, okay? We have our scenario manager. So all these are things that we use to plan to achieve what is likely going to happen. So irrespective of the tools that we use, you still see that everything can still be done in Excel. The only difference now is the scale in which you can implement that, okay? So that's why in recent times, you realize that most people are now moving from Excel, okay? So from analysis from Excel, to make more sophisticated analysis, they use SPSS, Tata, SES. Now you see people going to R and Python. But irrespective of the tool you use, Excel, it still starts with Excel and ends with Excel. Because even when we do all our analysis in Python, in R, sometimes you, when the result appears, it doesn't, it doesn't look appealing, okay? But you can easily take it back to Excel and still make it look more presentable. But irrespective of the, the analytics we are talking about, the heart of it is still data, okay? So now we call them data analytics, data scientists. The native person that who still does is the statistician. Okay, so it's that statistics that we are still dealing with. But now we are only moving it from more research driven in the academia to industry based. But although this has been there in the past, but now it's more at the forefront. Okay, but what we need to understand is that we try to make decisions. Okay, everything we try to do is to make what decisions. Okay, and your quality of decision depends on the information that you have. Okay, which means that for you to have information, it means you must be able to process the data. So it all starts with what? The data. Okay. So, and in the data, you must also understand how do I measure this data? Okay. So the data, we can break them into two parts, basically. Please, when you have questions, you can always ask because you can break, interrupt and ask. Okay. So I can answer them while I'm going along. So the heart of your decision making is your data. Okay, so, but we have the different kinds of data. So how do I get my data? Okay, so I can either get it from, if it doesn't exist, I go and generate it, either do a survey, okay, or it already exists, I go and pull it or scrape it, okay? So it all depends on the data. But again, we can categorize the data based on the nature, okay? So if it's a categorical variable, so maybe in terms of qualitative variable, or it's a quantitative variable, which is what, numbers. So for example, we have here, you have your gender, your segments, okay? Now all these are what we refer to as categorical because we can group them into different words, categories, okay? Then again, we can also classify, for example, you make sales. Okay, sales we know itself is quantitative, okay? It has numbers. But we can also classify it into a categorical variable by grouping them into two groups, either high sale, or low sale. Okay, question now is that how do I do this categorization of my sales? So, for example, one way to classify them is to first of all find the average, okay? And if you get the average, anything above the average, you can classify it as what high, and anything below the average, I classify it as low. So, it depends on the criteria that you use to group, okay? So, that can also be categorized. So, in the same way, you can also categorize your categorical variable, you can also group your categorical variable into a numeric variable assigning numbers to them. So we can convert them in either way. But what's important is that if you are going to make decision, you must understand the nature of the data. Because the nature of the data will determine the kind of analysis you are going to do. So Excel is just the tool we are doing, we are using in the analysis, okay? But for us to carry out the analysis, we must first of all understand the data. Okay, so one thing that we realize is that, first of all, we need what the data, but when we get this data, we need to what present this data, okay? When we present the data, then either we present it either in tables or charts, all depends on what you want, okay? After presenting it, what do we do? We start analyzing, then interpreting to draw 
a conclusion or make what decisions. So what we see that the objective of your statistics is to make decisions, okay? So although we are not going to call statistics, but we just need to understand that this, the statistics is just to help us make what decisions. And we can break them into two parts. What we call your descriptive and your inferential statistics, okay? And in your descriptive statistics, so remember it's about making decisions based on the data. But before we make decisions, we need to collect the data, organize the data, present the data without necessarily drawing any conclusion, okay? So that part of statistics is what we refer to as what descriptive what statistics. We are only what summarizing the data without drawing any conclusion, okay? So and basically what we are simply doing, we are simply trying to what describe, as the word implies, describe or summarize. So draw a summary, okay? Now the other aspect again is that based on the data, we need to what analyze and draw what conclusion. And that part is known as what inferential what statistics. Okay, so based on the population, we what based on the sample, we generalize. That's what they call inferential statistics. So it's just like saying uh, you are cooking a pot of soup. Okay, you want to check is there pepper, is there salt? So will you finish the whole pot of soup to check if there is uh, pepper or salt? So you need to just take a part, which is what your sample. So it is based on that you what generalize. And that's the same way we work with what the data. So at the end of the day, in statistics, what we basically do, either we describe the data, or we try to do some comparison, okay? We try to compare two groups, or we try to find some relationship, okay? If they are related, or we sometimes call them association. And again, we try to do some predictions mm, or forecasts. So these are the basic things that we do with what Excel and the kind of analysis we are going to do. So I will just try to do some kind of analysis here. So here we have uh, a data set, okay? So we have both categorical and numeric data. So when you have a categorical variable, okay? What are things you can do with your categorical variables? You can what, group them in terms of proportion to, in, to, to find out, okay, how many males, how many females, okay? And to do that kind of grouping, so I want to just summarize it. So and how do we summarize? You can summarize using your pivot or tables, which I'm sure most of us are familiar with, okay? So for example, my table is sales, okay? Um, okay, sales. So let's say gender, okay? How many of them? So I put there, okay, to so the count of it. And with that, we can easily what present that. So all we are doing, we are only presenting the data without drawing any conclusion, okay? So we are only describing the data. And when we do this, we can either put them in percentage. So most time we are trying to look at in terms of what proportions, okay? So that's why sometimes we have to change it and say view as a percentage of maybe the total, the grand total. So it can be in percentage terms, okay? Then I can now summarize it. That, oh, 51% of our customers are females, 48% are males, okay? And we can also present it using our charts, okay? So these are the kind of presentations we are talking about. So all we are doing, we are only describing the data. We are not drawing any conclusion yet. We are only what describing the data. Okay. Now, another thing we can do again is that, so these are categorical variables. That is basically what we do. We only try to summarize it. Okay. Now, if it is cat, uh, numeric, so for example, with your numeric data, now the same way we have, we group our, categorical variables, although it's already grouped for us into male, female, okay? But here we have numbers. We have numbers. But it also makes sense if we can also group it, okay? So the same way, we can also use what pivot or tables to also summarize our data. So for example, let's say price. So I take price, okay? Now, we have price ranging from, let's say, 44 to whatever amount it is, okay? Now, it will also make sense if I can group this data, okay? So let me pick my price and drop the price there, okay? So in terms of grouping, then I can group it. I can right-click there and group. So how do I want to group it? Uh, let's say, so the lowest price, let's say between, let's say, 40 and let's say maybe 92, okay? With an interval of 10. And all I have done, I have grouped, okay? So question, how many? 
so if it's in terms of price, so I need to now, so it all depends on the kind of analysis you want to do, okay? So all we are trying to do is just to what, group our what, data. Okay, so here we can switch it to counts. Uh, let me take that again. So we can have counts and we can easily what, summarize what the data. Okay, so basically what we are doing, we are only what summarizing the data. So that's basically what descriptive statistics does for you. Okay, another thing again we can do is that after we have described the data, we may want to compare. Okay, we may want to compare between two sets. Okay, of data. Okay, now we have uh, maybe sales reps. Okay, male, female. So I want to find out who performs better, a male or a female. Okay. So we want to try to do some comparison. So in statistics, when you try to compare, actually, we are not saying that, we know, yes, there may be a difference in the performance between males and females, but question now, is it significant? Okay, is it what significant? So that's why in statistics, what basically we look at is what we call significance testing. Significance testing, which most people refer to as hypothesis testing, okay? They call it what hypothesis or test. So you have a hypothesis, significance testing, or you call it your hypothesis testing. But although most times we refer to it as hypothesis, at the end of the day, what we want to find out, is there a significant difference? Now, if you want to carry out an analysis in statistics, we realize you have several tools, okay? Several statistical tools. But the question you need to understand is what conditions do we use then? So one of the tools that we have, okay, you hear of your t-test, you hear of your t-test, you hear of your z-test, okay, you hear of your ANOVA, so there are so many tools, okay, but you need to understand the conditions when they are used, okay. So most times, when your data sample size is small, when your data set is small, when we say small in statistics, we mean less than 30, Okay, we say the sample size is small. When it's large, we say it's greater than what? 30. Okay. Now, if it is a small size, what we normally use is the, called the t-test. So all I'm doing is trying to what? Compare. Okay. And how do you do that? So in, in Excel, you have equal to t, t-test. So here's a t-test. There was your array. So I can pick maybe my array one. Okay. I pick my array two. Okay, and question now, is it a one-tail test or two-tail test? Okay, now most times I know these things can be confused, especially those that go into machine learning and data science. So when you say one-tail or two-tail, it means what am I interested in? Am I interested in both sides? So either it can be male or female, or I'm interested in one. I'm saying a male is better than a female, so I'm one side, I'm choosing, I'm already choosing my side, okay? That male is better than female, or female is better than male. Okay, so that's one side. But if I'm not interested, most times we assume it's what a two-tailed test. So that's why most times we use what the two-tailed test. Okay, then the question now is that is it a paired or sample paired? Paired means they have the same sample size. So if it's some, the same sample size, so we we'll put paired. Okay, then we run that, and that is our probability. So the question now is that is it significant or not? What significant? So in statistics, we have what they refer to as what a p-value. Now, what does this p-value mean? Because most time we are going to use it all through in statistics. So what does p-value mean? So most time we know that we are only trying to estimate, okay? We are never going to use the whole population. We are only going to what estimate. Now, recently we have the coronavirus now, okay? So we, they are fighting to get a vaccine. But you must be sure that the, you must be 100% sure that the vaccine will not kill you faster than the disease itself, isn't it? You must be sure that the, 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 uh, the vaccine or the drug they are making will not kill you faster than the disease itself. But you know it is not possible to be 100% sure. But you must be at least, what, 1%, okay? Which indicates you are 99% confident, okay? In aviation too, you must also be 100% sure that the parts that they use to manufacture the aircraft has no defects. But because you cannot be 100% sure, at least you should be what, 99% sure. So that's what they call significance level, is what you call your margin of error. 
So if your margin of error is low, that means your confidence is high. Okay, but in management science, in social sciences, most time what we use is what five percent, which means that our error, our confidence level is usually what ninety-five percent. So that was simply means. So what's your confidence level? Okay, so say my confidence level is this. So what is the rule? The rule basically is that if your p values, okay, if your p value is less than five percent, less than or equals to five percent, what does that mean? means that what it is what it means is what significant because remember at the end of the day what we are checking is there a significant difference or is there a significant relationship that's basically what we are checking okay then if your p values are greater than 0 0.05 then we say it is what not significant okay so that's basically what we look at okay so if that's the case then we have a p-value which we can approximate to about 6%. So we can say that there's no significant what difference between them, okay? Or alternatively, we can say that we are 90 what? We are 94% confident that about the difference, okay? So what we normally do, we choose the level of significance. No, most time it's 5%, okay? And we now do some comparison. But for this to make more sense, we can also do, so we have a function called t-statistics. Again, we have a tool. So if you come to your data tab, so you have data analysis. Now, if you don't have that, what you simply do, you go to your file, you go to your options. So you go to your advanced. Okay, you go to your add-ins. So in your add-ins, you are going to have some um, two tabs. So you can use the Excel add-ins. So you can click to, you can click on your go. So you can see your analysis tool pack, you can see your solver, okay? So either of them. So when you when you bring that, you have your analysis or data analysis, okay? So if you go to your data analysis, you come down. So can you see the same, the same function we have there? We also have it here, okay? Which is our what? Two, so pair two means, okay? So how do we do this? We pick our male, then we pick our female, okay? Then we check the labels. Can you uh, see at 5%? Yeah, uh, Dr. Francis, one yes. thing, uh, I noticed that you currently now, that data analysis tool pack is just showing as a black screen. Oh, uh, so how do I do? And I'm noticing it on two screens. Maybe, can you close it and maybe open it again, maybe it will show. So you know- You're just showing black. Like we can't see what's inside it at all. Okay, stop share and share. So what am I sharing? So let me share again. The, maybe the entire window will work. Like your entire screen, sorry. Yes, yeah, so I'm so so entire screen. Okay. So I is this down. Okay. Uh, let's see, I'm waiting. Okay, yes. Is it showing now? Yes. So we are seeing your iPython notebook. Oh, I think yes, it's sharing now. So can you see the TPED? So data, data analysis. Is this, is this data analysis showing now? No, we are seeing your iPython notebook, your Jupyter notebook. Your Jupyter notebook is open. Oh, Jupyter notebook. Uh, are you sure you share the screen? The entire screen is the preferable one. The first option from the left. One. Is this showing? Okay, it's coming up. Yeah. No. Ah, awesome. Now it's showing. It's awesome. showing. Okay, that's fine. Okay, yes. that's fine. So right. I come to my data, data analysis, TPED, okay? So I select TPED. So why am I selecting TPED? Because the sample size is small, okay? Then I pick my data, my male, pick my data for female, click on labels, and okay, maybe I want it to show on a new sheet. So click OK, and the result is out. So you are going to see that you are going to accept in the same watch results that you have there, okay? In the same watch result, which says that, oh, there's no significant difference, okay, at 5%, okay? So if we check that, so because the data size is small, so it's telling the difference is not much. So actually what you are doing, you are not actually comparing this to this, you are checking the average, on average, are they the same? Okay, now why does this matter? Because sometimes 
who do I take as a so, so if there's a difference, okay? So does it matter who I who I send as my sales rep? Okay, so if there's a significant difference, I see, oh, females sell better than male. Okay, then it's better that I choose what females to represent. But if I see there's no significant difference in their sales performance, so it means either a male or a female, they are dif the difference won't be so much. Okay, another thing again we can do, where the sample size is large, most likely we are going to use what they call what a Z test. Okay, and it's the same word. It's still the same kind of word analysis. So again, I will go to my data, data analysis, and I go to my Z test, okay? So the same procedure. But the only difference here is that you must determine the uh, variance. The variance must be known, okay? But again, in statistics, when the sample size is large, we assume that your uh, T is approximate to your Z. So if you use your T test or Z test, you may still arrive at the same conclusion. So that's why in practice, most time and in most software, you still see they use the T-test. But what we are simply doing, we are trying to what compare, okay, between two groups. But if we have more than two groups, then we can no longer use the T-test or Z-test in terms of comparison. So what do we use? We use what they refer to as analysis of variance, okay? So what we call the ANOVA, okay, analysis of variance. Same thing we do, data analysis. So here I will come up to ANOVA. So we have the single factor with replication. So these are referred with interaction or no interaction. But let's, the analysis is still almost similar, okay, in terms of how you make your decision. So I'll pick my data. So this is my data set. Uh, so it's in columns. So I pick my labels in first row. So I can pick in a new sheet or select here. I click OK. So what do I do? So I'm trying to compare in terms of the different groups, okay? So I have different product, customer, corporate, and home office, okay? In terms of my segmentation. So I'm not asking, in terms of performance, is there any significant difference in the performance, okay? And what we can see here, so most of the way your data sets doesn't make any sense. So if you just highlight it and use your comma to put everything into to bring the full values out, okay? To bring the two, and again, what can we see? Our p-value is less than 5%. And remember, what was our decision? That if your values is less than 5%, it means it's what? Significant. So it means there's a significant difference in the word performance. Now, to make this more clear, so most times these data sets may not make sense when we say, oh, there's a significant difference. Now, because the data set is small, sometimes we may see that difference. But when you have a large data set, that difference may not be clear, okay? So we may also want to put it in a chart, okay? So, and the kind of chart we'll do is what they refer to as a box plot. So we can do what they call a box plot. So if I come to all charts, so we can now check. So if I plot the chart there, so that's the chart there. So what do we notice? Okay, so let me take that out. So what do we notice? Where is the problem, the difference coming from? So if we add our legends, so if we add our legends there, so we see that the difference is coming from where the corporate word office, okay? So here, what we are trying to do, is there a significant word difference? So those who in core statistics, they now do another test, what they call the post hoc tests, okay? So, but here, what are we saying that? Is there a significant difference in our various segments, maybe in terms of performance? So if we now see the diff if there's no difference, that means that either one, it doesn't really matter to us, okay? But if we see there's a significant difference, then we can now focus on where that difference is coming from, okay? So that's the same way we can, in terms of when you're checking your sales performance in terms of regions or what have you, okay? You can also compare that, okay? You can also compare that. So what we have simply done so far is that we can simply describe your data. And one way to describe your data is to do some descriptive analysis, okay? And what we have done, if it's a categorical variable, we can do some grouping to that what we have shown in the pivot table. But if it's numeric data, we can also group that. And also we can also do a descriptive statistics, which is the foundation, which comes again because in your functions, you have your mean, okay? Or you have your average. 
So average of, for example, you have your average of that. So it gives you a value there. So this is the average. You can have your maximum. You can have your maximum the same way you have the functions, okay? Maximum. Now, but how long can you continue doing all this, okay? So that's why in Excel, you already have the tool there. In your data analysis, you have your descriptive statistics, okay? Now, what do I want to describe? Now, you can only describe quantitative variables, okay? Only the ones that have numbers. So, for example, sales revenue, unit, price, production, okay? I can't analyze consumer uh, sales high or low, gender, I can't analyze that in the script. So the data must be what's quantitative. So if that's the case, then I will now pick my uh, range. So I pick my range from sales revenue down. So all I will do then label, I can put that, click on your summary statistics. So I put it on a new sheet. And what we have done, we have summarized the whole data. Okay, now you can easily just transform this data, okay, and uh, clean it up. But what are we looking out for? Basically, I'm looking for the maybe maximum. I'm looking for maybe the minimum. I'm looking for the mean, okay. Uh, maybe count, if that's in, of interest to you. Now, but why is this important? Now, in your analysis, most time, we want to check if there are outliers, okay. I know most time, if I ask, can we interpret the mean? So we have a mean value of price. Let's say the average price is, uh, let's say 72 Naira. So can somebody interpret this price for me of 72 Naira? What does it mean? How can we interpret 72 Naira? Or your unit sold. You say the average is, uh, where is our average? It's 1,000 and... Uh, 22. So can somebody interpret the average for me? What, how do we interpret the average? Well, one thought that comes to me is, uh, so the average, well, that, that means for the price, uh, if people typically buy one thing at a time, then that shows me like that, that's the, uh, the average uh, purchasing power, like that's the average they are willing to pay for a product or okay. one unit of Within product. Yeah. So basically, what your average does for you is to help you set a benchmark. Okay, it helps you what set a benchmark. Now, it's so for example, when you hear the industry average, what are they doing? They are taking the average of the average, like taking average of the average. So it means that if you perform above that average, it means you are a high performer. If you are performing below the average, you are a low performer. So what your mean does for you is to help you set a benchmark. Okay. Now, what you realize is that in this this report, you can see that you have the median. Now, you can only rely on the mean if your data is normally distributed. So when you say your data is normally distributed, it means no bias and there are no outliers. Okay. Now, but once you notice, it's just like saying in an, in an, in a, in an executive class, okay, we have maybe in Nigeria, we say the average uh, executive in we want to find out the average maybe pay of an CEO in Nigeria, okay, in a particular class. And part of the executive in that particular session was Bill Gates. Okay. And after we calculated the average, we now say that the average pay of the Nigerian uh, CEO, okay, we said is $2 million. But you see, because of the inclusion of Bill Gates, that is an outlier, okay. Because of that, you can no longer rely on the average, okay? So average, you can only use average when your data is normally distributed, no outliers. But the moment you notice there's an outlier, so rather than using the mean or the average, what do you use? You use the median, okay? But your mode is usually used for qualitative what variables. So that's one key thing you need to understand about mean and median, okay? All right, we have looked at descriptive. So we have looked at how to compare, okay? Now we need to find our relationship. So when we have two or more variables, we want to find out quantitative variables, most especially. We want to find out, is there a relationship between these variables, okay? So in that case, we deal with what they call what? Correlation, what? Analysis. 
And in correlation analysis, what we are simply basic, what we are doing is just looking at relationship between two variables, okay? And your correlation analysis tells you two things. It tells you direction, and it tells you what? Your strength of relationship. So in terms of direction, you are checking, is it positive or is it what? Negative, okay? Is it negative? In terms of uh, strength, you are looking at, is it strong or is it what? Weak. So this is either is positive or negative, okay? Now, in the same way, we also have a function called correlates. Okay, so I correlate this with this. And I run that. And you have your correlation coefficients. So that means your correlation coefficient of 0 0.89 just tells you there's a positive so if you don't see a negative sign, it means it's positive, okay? Now, if it is above 50, pass mark in the exam is 50. So if it's above 50, we assume it's what? Strong. So if I'm interpreting this, I will say that there's what? There's a strong positive relationship between what? Advertisement and what? Sales. Okay? Now, if we have more than one variable, we now need to represent in what we call a correlation matrix. Okay? And that, again, we don't have it in the function itself, but we have it in the two-pack. Okay? So if you come to your correlation, okay. Impute range. I select my range. Okay? Uh, columns. All right. So I can take that in a new sheet if I want to. Okay. So I also have my correlation matrix. Now it's the same interpretation, okay, whether it's positive or negative. Now, but the challenge is that your correlation, so for example, we have a strong positive correlation. So assuming these two variables was price of polish and price of fish. And I see the relationship is strong, but in reality, do they have any relationship? So this kind of relationship is what they refer to as what a spurious they call it what is spurious correlation, which means it doesn't make sense. It's just by chance that they are highly what correlated, but in reality, they are not correlated. So realize that one problem is that in correlation, it does not separate what is a dependent or independent variable, which means that if I run fish on polish or po uh, fish on polish, polish on fish, it will give me the same results. Okay. Secondly, you realize that 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 it is highly correlated can be by mere chance. It doesn't mean that one causes the other. So there's no cause what effect. And another challenge you realize is that your correlation analysis, you can't use it to forecast, okay? So as a result of these problems with correlation, you can't really take the results so seriously. You can only look at direction, that's all, okay? Now, in order to understand the relationship better, then the provided under estimation technique known as what regression what analysis, okay? So regression analysis like your correlation helps you to do various things. One, it helps you to what? Find what the relationship, okay? It helps you to do another thing, which is what? To find the cause effects, okay? Which your correlation cannot do for you. And lastly, it can help you to what? Forecast or make your word predictions. So these are the basic things your regression analysis does for you, okay? So it helps you find relationship, okay? Find the cost effects and what make your word forecasts, okay? So anytime you hear regression analysis, the key thing that you remember is what they refer to as the OLS. So when you hear your linear regression, so this is what we use. So those who are into machine learning data science, the heart of every algorithm is still built with this word OLS. Eh? And for us to realize this, to rely on this, it has certain what assumptions, but we're not going into all that, okay? So basically what we try to do, we are trying to what estimate, okay? So remember what I said, that the kind of data you have will determine the kind of analysis you are going to carry out, okay? So if it's a quantitative variable or is it a qualitative word variable? In the same way, you can also analyze using your regression analysis. So this is a quantitative data. So what we are trying to do in simple terms, we have y as a function of x. So in correlation, we cannot separate between dependent and independent word variable. 
Okay, so but in regression, one assumption is that your model must be correctly what specified, which means you clearly know what is your dependent variable and what is called your independent variable. Now, this is what most times they call your features. They call it your features or you call them predictors. Okay, why here you call it your outcome? your outcome variable or your target variable. Now, how do I know which is which? For example, if I ask a question, what makes a man happy? So what factors do you think make a man happy? Yes. Let me mention some factors. Money. Money. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. What again? Peace. Uh, Women. women, okay, women, okay. Now, if it is so, happiness, so happiness is what we are trying to determine. So that's what we refer to as what well, the dependent words variable, okay. Now, but if you have, oh, it is only money that makes a man happy, then this is what we refer to as a single regression model, okay. But if there are more than one factor that makes a man happy, so money and women, so it's called what a multiple regression word model. Okay, so in that way, we can also, what we are trying to do is to estimate a line of best fits, which is called y is equals to a plus bx. So this is the basic linear model that we have, which we can do. So this your a is called your word intercepts. Okay, it's called your word intercepts. And this your b is called your slope. Okay, it's called your what? Your slope. Now, in Excel, you also have a function called intercepts. Okay, so what's my known y? So it must be clear. What is my y? What is my x? Okay, what is my y? Okay, this is my y. What is my x? Now, most times, so this is time. Okay, now when you are trying to uh, estimate a variable over time, so rather I just create a new variable called y. So I Create it one, two time, one time, two time, three to whatever. Okay, so that's how I put my time. So in my intercept, I have my intercept. Was my x my y? So this is my y. Okay, and was my x? This is my x. Okay, and I have my intercept. Was my slope? I also have a function called slope. Okay, this is my y, and this is my x. Okay. And at the end of the day, we come out with our model that uh, sales is equals to what's my intercept? 1126.4 let's say four, plus 163.16. Okay, x. And what's that my x time? Now, if we have done this, okay, so another way of doing it, so another way of doing this, I can also highlight my data and simply plot a chart, a line chart, okay? But in this case, I, I can just select my data. I just want my time uh, out, so I can remove that. So here I can pick my years. Let me just pick my years there, okay? I pick my years there and plot my charts. So this is my chart there, okay? Now what I can do, I can just right click and add a trend line, okay? add a trend line. So can you see in your trend line, you say display equation on charts. So this is the equation on chart. This is a regression also. So what we have run here is the same thing that we have run here. Okay, what we have run. So instead of me running it this way, I can also run it this way. But this is for simple words regression. Okay, and remember again, what we want to do again, we also want to word forecast. So if I want to forecast, so I mean that, so if I ask what would be sales in 2020? So if here is 16, that means what is likely going to be is that I know my intercept plus my slope multiplied by, so that is your forecast, okay? So remember, regression helps you do one, find relationship. So in terms of relationship, I'm using this my slope. So here is telling me there's a positive relationship. I mean, sales is growing over what time, okay? But when I'm looking at two variables, that's when you actually see that relationship, okay? 
Secondly, it helps you forecast. So how can we forecast? So this is how you forecast, okay? Again, there's also a function called forecasts, okay? So what's my X? So this is what I want to forecast. What is my Y? So this is my Y. What's my X? This is my X. So if I run that, it will still give me the same report. Okay? But they have also made life easy for us because it's now in your data. Look, if I come to my data analysis, I come down. Can you see your regression? So you also have your regression there. Okay? So what's my Y? This is my Y. So I can, now I can pick my labels. Okay? So let me take that aside. So I go to my data analysis, regression. Okay, I pick my Y. So this is my Y. Mm, let me select that. Okay, uh, was my X. Uh, this is my X. So yeah, I pick my, so let me pick my X over time. Okay, I select my labels. Then if you want your residual, then that's fine. So you also have your regression analysis too. So you see, you can run your, it's the same result we also have, okay? You can also run it. But now when you interpret it, so sometimes the result doesn't make any sense, just highlight it, then just format it, put a comma there and everything goes there, okay? So let me go to a multiple regression. So I think that will make more sense. So for example, if I'm find, trying to find out what drives my revenues, Okay, what is driving my revenues? Okay, and I think, oh, there are several factors that drive my revenues. Several factors that drive my revenue. It can be the price of the product, it can be the quantity sold, it can be my cost of production. Okay, so I have to be clear what is my dependent variable, which is my Y. Okay, I can also run a regression on that. So I go to my data. Now, understand something that regression is about pattern recognition. Okay, it's about pattern recognition. So it is based on that pattern. So that is why in Excel, if I have one, if I have two, I have four. The next thing should be six. The next thing should be eight. The next thing should be 10. So it means inbuilt in Excel is a regression analysis. What we are dragging is about pattern recognition. So that's what regression does for you. It's about pattern recognition. So if it understands this pattern, so can I rely on this pattern going forward? Okay, so what your regression, that your trend line is actually helping you to do what prediction. Okay, but if I am going beyond that timeline, it is now known as what forecast. So that is the technical difference between your prediction and what forecast. Okay, so if I run the regression here, okay, I click Y, okay, so let me pick that. I pick uh, my variables. So if I'm picking my variables, I'll pick everything. You need to do that, and I run that. Okay, if I want it on the new sheet or an output, so the output, if I select my output, maybe on this part. Okay, let's click OK, so I have my regression results. So when you see the regression results, it looks so annoying, okay? So don't bother yourself with all the many figures there. Just look out for four things. Just four things you look out for. Look out for your arrow square. Okay, this is your arrow square. Look out for your arrow square. Look out for your F value. Okay, most time use your P values. So this is your significance. It's also known as your P values. Okay, now you see it is showing you this. It means 0.00. .00. So just put your comma there and it will break, break it down for you. Okay, then again, look for, so we say look for your P value, very important, your F values. So these are your F values. Look for your coefficients. So these are your coefficients. These are your coefficients here. Okay. And look for the P value or your T values. Okay. Along with their P values. But most of the time when we are looking at the T values, what we want to pick is the P, the corresponding P word values. Okay. So how do we re read this? Remember our rule is that in management sciences, we are using what 0 0.05 as the rule. Okay. 0 0.05. So we are asking, if it is less than 0.05, what does it mean? If it's less than 0.05, what does it mean? It means it is significant. When you say it's significant, it means it's important. Okay, it is important. But if it's not significant, so for example, what, what is this saying? Now, 
this is less than 0 0.05. It means it's significant. It means the demand or unit demanded has an important impact or has a major impact on my revenue. Production cost shows that it is not significant. Okay, it means that whatever happens to production costs, it doesn't drive my revenue. That is based on this data. Okay, so it means even if I, so in terms of strategy, it is only those variables that are significant that we craft our strategy around. So it means that even if we increase production costs, we try to reduce production costs, what this result is telling us, okay, that it doesn't drive our revenue. But the case may be different. In reality, it may be different, but this is just a quick talk data, okay? So but the point here you must take is that it is only those variables that are significant that we use to drive our strategy, or we can use to now forecast or predict what is happening, okay? Now, your arrow square, what arrow square is simply telling you? To what extent do all these your variables explain? So it's just like what makes a man happy? So for example, if it is money and women, then we can interpret this 97% that money and women account for 97% of a man's happiness, okay? Which means only 3% is left by other factors. Those other factors are usually captured by what we call the error word term. Then again, to check if your model is significant, we use this F value. Okay, and if your air value is less than zero, it simply means that these variables, money and women collectively, have a significant impact on a man's happiness. Okay, so that's basically interpretation of your regression word results. Most time, when you have a trend line, okay, what you can I've shown you how to do a trend line, okay, but when you have a time series data, in this case, sometimes you have to be careful with Excel, okay, when you are dealing with trend lines. Now, when we have a trend line, it's, if I click on my trend line in set line charts, so this is a trend line with the data, okay? So if I want to get my trend line, I will right click and uh, add trend line, okay? If I select my display equation on charts, then I have the equation on charts. Uh, sorry, okay, so this is my equation on charts. Now, please take notes sometimes you must also be careful whether these values are correct, okay? That Excel has calculated the value doesn't necessarily mean it's correct. Now, this is the same data set. I'm not using the time, okay? I would just want to plot it, the trends, okay, in itself. So the same way, I have a trend line. I will right-click on the data, add trend line, okay? Display equation on charts. Okay, display equation on chart. Now what you realize that we have two different trend lines with the same data. Please take note, anytime you are trying to get the trend line, especially when it's a long time series data, do not use this, uh, the time along with it. It will give you a wrong value. So most times this is the correct one and not this. So you must take that into consideration, okay? Uh, so forecast, and that thing again you can do when you have time series data like this, you can also do what? A forecast, okay? Now to forecast, you just understand that forecast is just an estimation. We are not saying it is exact. So because it cannot be exact, so rather than saying, oh, I predict that my sales is going to be 10 million naira, you are not good, okay? So rather than say it's 10 million naira, you rather put a range. You say it may lie between 5 million and 15 million. Okay, so that's why whenever you are doing a forecast, you must forecast within what a range, okay? So to do that, uh, if you have a time series data and you make sure there's no missing data in between, then your forecast is very easy. So there's a tool already known as forecast sheets, okay? So if I click on forecast sheets, so what do I want to forecast? So if you look at my data set, so my data set is from 2005 to 2018, okay? So I want to forecast to 2019, monthly data for 2019, okay? So if I want to do that, if I click on my forecast sheet, so automatically it will forecast for me, but I want to, now it's forecasting up to 2022. Please take note, this is an estimate. The longer your forecast period, the more unrealistic it is and the less reliable it's going to be, okay? So the shorter your uh, forecasting period, the better. Okay, so in this case, we are going to take for 2019, December 2019, and click OK. And that's our forecast sheet, and that's our forecast, and this is our data. So that's our forecast data, and this is our range, okay? 
So that's our forecast sheet. Then lastly, the kind of data you realize is that if I have a depend, so for example, we look at the sales data, okay? All our variables there were more likely quantitative variables, okay? Quantitative variables, okay? They were quantitative what? Variables, okay? But there are some variables by nature, they are quantitative, they are qualitative, I mean. But we want to measure them. So what we do, we try to what, assign values to them. So that process is known as assigning a dummy to it. So for example, in this case, if you have a website, if you have a website, I want to find out what, is the, what are the factors that will drive a customer to click on the website? Okay, so you see that it's going to click or not click. So because I'm trying to find out what is going to make him click or not click, okay, then I now need to assign values to it. So if he's going to click, I assign one. Otherwise, I assign what? Zero. That's what we refer to as what? A dummy word variable. Okay, it's a dummy. Okay, so I'm trying to explain what are those factors that we explain this. Okay, now realize that your normal regression cannot work in this case because the result is going to be what? Unreliable. Okay, it's going to lead to what they call spurious regression. Why? Because your values are going to lie between zero and one, which is a probability. So that's why when you are uh, explaining your coefficients, it has to lie between zero and one. So because of that, your normal regression analysis will fail. So rather, what we do, so whenever your dependent variable, when your dependent variable has a binary outcome, what does that mean? Either one or zero, okay? We use what they refer to as what? Binary logistic regression. Okay, but if that your dependent variable is, so if you have your uh, dependent variable as maybe one, two, three, four, five, maybe one to five on a scale of one to five, so there's an order to it, isn't it? There's an order to it. So that is what they call what? Ordinal, so they also call it ordinal logistic regression, ordinal. So you have ordinal logistic regression. So either logistic binary probit, but most in practice, most time you see a binary case. Now in that, you see that your data analysis in your regression, it doesn't give you room to capture this type of binary. It gives you a normal regression, okay? So recently, Excel has made life easy for us, okay? They have now brought in, so if you come to your insets, okay, you go to get add-ins, you now have a lot of two packs, okay? So if I come to my data analytics, I go through my data. So we are go I'm going to see where I have Excel. So you will see where they have Excel, ML. So there are a lot of tools now that have come up. So if you scroll through, you are going to see um, Excel. So that is it, Excel minor analysis tool pack. So this is a new tool pack now. So agree, continue, okay? So if I have that, so if you have that, so you realize that now if you go through it, it's just like your normal Excel tool pack. Everything we have in our Excel tool pack is almost the same thing, but difference now, can you see you now have logistic regression? Okay, now I can select my data point, but you see, where it's not picking the full range for you, then you have to just type in that range. So for example, if I pick that data set, so my add on, my click on add is my dependent variable. So I have to select that range, okay? So if I'm selecting, maybe I have to type it manually. So from there to there, it's about, uh, so if I check my full range, it's about 1,001, okay? So this is 1,001. So that full range, if I pick the set, so I have F, so it's F what? F1 to what? So F1 to F, okay, so I have to hold it constant, 1,001. So I just put my dollar sign there. My dollar. Normally, sometimes you pick it, it can pick it automatically for you. This is what we do in our regression. It's supposed to pick it automatically for you. But where it doesn't pick it, then you have to now select the range. So that's the only difference with this adding, okay? So you now have to select. So for example, my independent variable is from here to here, okay? So it's from A1 to E1001. So if I copy this out, 
I come and paste it here. Okay, so it is from A1, okay, to E1001, okay. Then I select my range. So if I click here and doesn't click, I can just type it there. Otherwise, you give me an error. So but since it has picked for me, then I click OK. So it has given me my what logistic watch regression. OK, and you do the same interpretation. But the only difference now is that when you are interpreting your logistic regression, rather than you saying it has a significant impact, now it's now dealing with more like probabilities. So for example, if I have a site, so is it significant? Yes, it's significant, okay? So how do I interpret it? I just simply say that a you so generally how we interpret it that a unit increase, okay? For example, a unit increase in daily time, okay, will likely increase my dependent variable, okay? So an increase in X will make my Y likely to what happen or not what happen. So if I look at this, what are those factors that will likely make a customer click? So it means that the time you spend, the age, the uh, income level, and what maybe internet usage are the factors that will drive whether a customer is going to click on the site or not. All right, thank you very much. I think that should be all.